Uh, I don't think there are any appearances. Unfinished business, item 5A, consideration of resolution 18-1-2234, amending the 2018 operating budget for a full-time administrative assistant in the Parks and Recreation Department put forth by the Parks and Recreation Director. Is there a motion to approve this? Um, yeah, I'll move approval. I'll second. Um, do you mind if I go before James? Yes. Right, just kind of give you an update yeah. with the, where we're at before we go. So the question was, we looked at the last meeting was closing of TIF 2, uh, when that would come online as far as equalized value and which would increase our levy limit. Um, talked talk to Gary Becker who also talked with the, uh, he's worked with the state on this before. Um, what's going to happen, we'll close TIF 2, we'll send a notification um, to the state after April 15th and once they get that notification, um, it's basically considered closed. Um, so by the time equalized value comes around and determining uh, the levy limit, that will be closed for their purposes. Well, we'll come in line uh, for the next year's levy limit. I did look into what that kind of would amount to. Um, roughly about, um, based on some numbers, uh, granted some of these numbers are going to change, um, but a good number is going to be around, around three, you know, give or take a little bit, is around 325. 325,000 um, is what will be able to increase it. Um, I did look in to what that, where we're at right now. Um, so I looked into, you know, all that 325, uh, what's kind of accounted for. So for the, with the rec, the fire, uh, and the dispatch, um, and I did look at health insurance because that's, you know, a given. I'd put that at 80%, what's been added on. And there's another uh, budget amendment coming up here for, uh, brush um, that we'll need to look in for 19. If I add all those numbers up, um, it's going to be roughly 193,000 um, of that we'll be using if we approve everything uh, with the rec part, with the rec budget um, and with the uh, brush collection that's Easier coming. Yes, this is everything included, the rec, fire, dispatch, health insurance at 8% and then uh, brush collection an additional $10,000. So that would leave us with about 132,000 not already encumbered. Is that what you're saying? Correct. And that's just the levy portion related to the TIF closing. Mm -hmm. Does not include um, any new construction, which I don't know if we're. I would say it's not going to be a large increase um, because there's not a lot. Of, I don't. I don't believe there was a lot of large construction last year. Um, that's going to boost it a, a ton, but there will be some number. There will be some type of increase. All right, thank you very much. Question: um, You said that, that three twenty-five was a good number. You mean? I mean, a good. It's a good. I mean, it's going to be right around to three twenty-five to give or take twenty-five thousand. Pretty close. So it's, it's just um, there's some fluctuation I, uh, with how the uh, uh, just their formula, um, give or take a couple of rounding percentages points. So. And that's our share of the increment. Yes. Right. Yep. Yes. And then on the the levy uh, levy limit, there's um, there's no like it used to be years ago. I think there was a minimum like if you didn't if you didn't have some small percentage of growth, you still could raise the levy like one percent or one and a half or whatever it was. That that doesn't. Yeah, it's no um, longer. It's just yeah. new construction. That's the only thing. That it's loud now. And do we, would, will we lose value because of the taking down the buildings at Riverfront? Uh, or were those already not counted because effectively at least the city owned them? The, I mean, I they, would the if they, they would if they were still on tax roll. And that was one of the reasons why we had a redetermination of the base because they were right. taken out. So okay. that won't have an effect. Because they were, yeah, by that point, they actually were owned by the city. Yeah, property. and they had a zero yeah. value for it. Okay, thanks. Value. And couldn't we, could we have a partial tax payment if given that it's... Uh, the year after, yeah, okay. Not not oh, next year tax year. Next year. The year exactly. after tax year, they could be a partial, depending where they're at, as of okay. two thousand. That would go to the tip. Yep. Anyway, okay. But it would be a new construction number still. So. Right. Okay. That would be two years away. I mean, not next 
tax for the 2020 budget. Okay. Uh, we will just one last thing we, with the TIF closing, just so you know. Uh, we will have. So we closed the TIF this year and we'll close it in 19 as far as the levy limit. But since it's open for technically one more year, which is 19 for the Renew Monona Hall Works, um, we can't officially send, uh, we will close like accounting purposes. We'll close it out in 2019, we'll close it. We'll send, so it's like $1.5 million or $1.4 million. And that gets divvied out between all the districts. And so we'll get that. Our share was like three hundred some thousand too. That's going to go in just into our fund balance. The school district will be in large. addition to yeah, it's something totally separate. It's yeah. just going to go in our fund balance. What's remaining in there? Not renew Monona. It's just what's in the remaining balance right now. That'll okay. come back to us in two thousand. What year is this? So two thousand nineteen. Okay. Is that the, what we would get it towards the end of two thousand? I know at one point you told me we get something. Yeah, you in the, the yeah. Once we close and do the accounting, we charge it out. Whatever's left over, we have to give back to all the districts, including us, and that would be 19. Okay. Late, late 19, but it'll be, you'll have a fund balance increase about 300 some thousand. And that just, will just be a one time. One thing. time only. Yeah. The other, the 325 number you're talking about will be. Into our base continuing. forever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So for this year, we're looking for. An additional twenty, close to twenty-five thousand. Is that right? For twenty eighteen. Correct. Okay. So it's twenty. You're talking about for this position? Yeah. So it's twenty-eight in the. This. Well, that's the latest thing I have. Okay. Maybe I'm looking. At, maybe there's something else. Uh, I was looking at the resolution. Um. Yeah, twenty-eight thousand. It's twenty-eight. Okay, I must yeah. have a earlier. And then next year, what will it be ongoing? So the next year increase in the bottom, just for this position, not including as after school person, will be the additional forty five thousand six eighty five will be will be increased. Okay. The expenses maybe we can offset them by some costs, but if we don't, that would be the increase to levy or okay. revenues. Wait, forty five. Forty five thousand. So next year we do the two thousand just for this position. The increase will be forty-five thousand to the levy. Um, if there's no other revenue source to help offset it, that would be forty-five thousand. Uh, okay, it's twenty-eight because it's April, calculated as of April one. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think. Hmm. Okay, do you have any other questions? Do you have any no. questions for Jake? No? Um, I'm just trying to think. I think that was the only thing that really. Oops. I think that's the main thing we were waiting for. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the pay range, you're going to do a pay range of 16 to 18? Correct. Yep, but 16 to 18, depending on qualifications. Okay. And is this twenty-eight number based on eighteen? It's at the highest rate. It's at the highest yeah. level. Okay. As it originally was proposed. Okay. And just one other question: the current position that's advertised through for the after-school coordinator or the, for yeah. the administrative well, assistant? Are they both being advertised now? The after-school coordinator closes on Friday. Okay. Um, that administrative assistant we haven't posted yet, depending right. on the outcome of what happens here tonight. Okay. But, but that I was posted as a full time the, position. Correct. The after school coordinator position right. is full time. If this gets approved, um, recreation responsibilities will get added in lieu of some of those administrative assistant duties. Um, some of Missy's responsibilities will change with what's coming at Riverfront and what we'd like to do with some of our special events. Okay. There's plenty of work to go around. <laughs> Okay, so anything else? No. I guess all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> <laughs> Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next 
Item 6A under new business, consideration of resolution 18-2-2236, purchase approval of two police vehicles. Chief Ostranga. Is, I'm sorry, is there a motion to approve? Move approval. I'll second. In the 2018 capital budget, um, there was $82,000 allocated for the replacement of two squad cars. Uh, what we'd like to do is replace a squad 116, was it, which is a 2011 Ford Crown Victoria used by our canine unit, and also a squad 115, which is a 2014 um, squad that is currently assigned to the school resource officer, but um, it would be the new car would go back and patrol, and then the SRO would get the the best car that we have. That's uh, that's one of the older cars for the SRO position. Uh, using the state bid, um, the canine car would be from uh, Ewald Auto in Oconomowoc is $34,063.50, and then the other patrol car would be $32,121.50 for a total of $66,185. Okay, any questions? Yeah. Uh, so, and that's um, about, what, 16, not quite 16,000 under budget? Yeah, that's, um, that, the, the rest of the budget would be used for um, upgrading equipment and the changeover, stripping out the old cars, outfitting the equipment basically. into the new cars. So outfitting it. Yes. Be, okay. They call it upfitting. That's upfitting what the term it. is. Of course. Anything else? Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. The next item 6B, consideration of resolution 18-2-2237. Purchase approval of dispatch consoles. Is there a motion to approve this? Move approval. And I will second. Chief Ostrenga. The two dispatch consoles currently in use, uh, we've had since 2009, and we bought them used then from the Middleton Police Department. At this point, uh, they're used 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, they have, um, the workstations are, are adjustable, so you can raise the monitors and the, and the, the actual desk area. Um, it's gotten to the point where we can't get replacement parts if those controllers or the motors go out. <coughs> and uh, it, we just like to uh, make a, uh, a workstation that is more um, environmental friendly and um, functional for the dispatchers. Uh, we checked out, uh, the Zybex is the company that we'd like to go with. They're sort of the, the, um, the most accepted company. That, that's the equipment we have now. We had gotten quotes from uh, another company called Right Line. Um, they came in a little bit cheaper, but the quality of the, the furniture wasn't the same. Uh, General Communications also gave us a quote. Uh, they came in about uh, $5,000 higher with the exact same equipment based on they were going to have uh, project management fees and things like that. The, by, by buying it directly from Zybex, the company, uh, we're saving money, and there'll, there'll be some. Um, I have on the the resolution not to price not to exceed thirty five thousand. I believe that was the amount that was allocated in the budget. No, thirty seven thousand was just um, allocated in the budget. We think we can probably come in or, um, below that. Uh, we would basically be our own project managers, and um, as far as taking equipment out and putting it in, we would do that in house or with the assistance of our I IT. But the actual company will come in, disassemble the old dispatch consoles, and reinstall install the new dispatch consoles and haul away um, the old equipment. And are you going to be arranging for painting in between there? Yes, that's uh, <laughs> that's something that we'll also have to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything? Um, so, what else is involved in the project management besides you know taking the old one out, putting the new one in? Well, just coordinating uh, when things are happening. Um, you know, we've uh, we've moved them, we've moved the equipment. We installed, we disassembled these in Middleton and transported them to Monona ourselves. Uh, we installed them in house. Um, I think just with the assistance, we need help from 
from maybe a public works person or our maintenance person, but usually we uh, we can handle pretty much everything ourselves. Okay. It's, it's basically just tagging the computer equipment, moving it, putting it back, and making sure you plug the things in correctly. Right. Will there be a gap in service? No. When this is happening? No, we just do, well, there's two uh, positions and we just do one, one a day. Okay. Anything else? How much cheaper was the other quote? Um, right line came in at uh, $32,151. Zybex, uh, I just got an updated quote today. That one's $33,302. So roughly $1,100. But do you think the quality of this? The quality of these better. are much, it's the same. much better. I mean, I could, I have pictures I could pass around for folks to look at too. Yeah, okay. okay. But they have built-in lights. They have built-in fans. Uh, it's actually designed for the room as opposed to, let's try to cobble something and, sh you know, push it in the corner and make it work. Right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next item 6C, consideration of resolution 18-2-2238, authorization to single source the purchase of a new ambulance. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, I'll motion to approve for discussion purposes. I will second. Chief Sullivan. Uh, good evening. Uh, in the 2018 capital budget, we've got, we've got the money allocated to purchase a new ambulance. Um, the ambulance committee, truck committee, um, came to me with the request to re uh, to single source this uh, through uh, Braun Manufacturing. They're the same man same ambulance company that we purchased the last two ambulances from. Um, the the main benefit of having Braun do it uh, as opposed to another ambulance is we're trying to once again um, make everything identical from one rig to the next rig. The other thing that uh, Braun has proprietary is the sliding door similar to on a uh, minivan and when we're working out on the belt line you no longer have, if you have a regular swinging door you have a blind spot that you have to go around. Um, with the sliding door, it it doesn't create that blind spot, so the safety is um, much higher with the with the brawn with that sliding door. Um, Chris is in charge of the ambulance spec committee, so and he's the one who brought it up to me. I'll kind of defer the rest of the questions to him. So, so no one else makes one with the sliding door. Nope. Is that like you pull the? How does that work? They slide under the side, then. Yeah, yeah. there's like a hinge that goes that's built into the body. So when you open the latch, it just kind of slides and along so the body. It's a side door. Okay. So similar to uh, on, a, on a minivan, minivan. it okay. slides. Yeah. Right. So you now have a space this big as, a, as opposed to a space the width of the door um, that you're looking around. And also utilizing the same manufacturer, we can get the inside cabinetry the same. Um, if if we go to a different manufacturer, every manufacturer builds their inside ambulances different. So you know we're just trying to get it identical to make it easier to use when we're back and forth to each rig. Um, I'm not, this might be more for the chief, but. We didn't want to do. Um, the last time we bought an ambulance, you know, did we single source that with Braun? We did not. Okay. We, we did put that out to bid, and we ended up with two we, bids. Yeah, we ended up with two, or actually three bids, two couldn't meet the specs. Braun was the only one that could meet the specs. So in our spec that we had, we had uh, total aluminum, so there's no wood or anything in the module. Yeah. So those those total aluminum construction. We don't want the the issue with yeah. having wood products, wood cabinetry, um, in an ambulance is we do have um, bodily fluids mm -hmm. that then can absorb into mm -hmm. um, the wood. Um, they do do a, a decent job of covering them, but there's still that possibility that 
the wood is going to absorb bodily fluids, where the full aluminum won't absorb any bodily fluids. Is there any reason why you can't put it out to bid and consider other bids? I mean, I, I get why you'd like to go with the brawn, but... It, it just, it, it extends the, um, the time frame. In terms of it takes you longer to consider the return? Well, by the time we write, we, to, we write the specs, by the time we set them out, by the time we get them back, the review. So yeah. you have to rewrite the specs for everybody you yeah. send it to? Yeah, you, you have to write a base spec and that base spec basically has to allow, if we put in there that we are only going to accept um, ambulances with a sliding side door, mm -hmm. no one else will bid on it because okay. they, they can't. So we have to, to remove that particular okay. thing okay. from it. Right. And that's why we you end up with a lot lower bids uh, or bid numbers, not pricing but um, the amount of companies that are actually going to okay. bid on it. And no one else has a sliding door yet. Yeah. <coughs> so I understand, I mean, I understand why you'd want to stay with the same company and, but I have a really hard time with a $200,000 budget item to not get more than one quote. So, but I wish Brian were here because they assume this go through public safety or yep, yep, went through public safety. Yeah, was but he'll be here for the council meeting to maybe explain it some more from the committee's perspective. But that's sort of my gut reaction when I saw it was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's a lot of money to spend without yep. getting more than one price. Yep. Mm -hmm. and the um, I mean, the big thing is that for from my standpoint is that safety issue of the sliding door yeah. having our personnel. Um, not have to look around that right. and the I, door. Yeah, you know, if, if it came back and, and there was, you know, another bid or bids that were cheaper but didn't have those kind of, like that feature, mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that's a reason to accept, to go ahead and accept, this, uh, you know, a higher bid. Yeah. But it's, like I said, it you know, goes against the grain to not get another bid, so. So how would you like to handle this? I'd be okay with, you know, we could forward it to council with no recommendation and let, the re let everybody figure it out. Okay. Do we need to change the motion, oh, Joan, right. to do um, that? You can just word it that we we'll just say um, um, motion to amended, to, uh, motion amended to defer to council. Okay. Is that yeah. proposed? So right. Or the, so I would move that we um, for refer it to council with no recommendation. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Yep. Item 18 2 2239, approving a bid for the purchase of a street sweeper. Mr. Stefani. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this will be somewhat similar to the fire department's request. Um, we did put our street sweeper out to bid, and we received one bid. Um, we did uh, write it um, with one particular um, piece of equipment that um, that we preferred due to operations and maintenance costs. Um, but before that, let me let me kind of read uh, the resolution and our budget number here. Um, we have 230,000 in our 2018 capital budget for the purchase of a street sweeper. We advertised at the uh, Herald Independent on our city website, the Wisconsin Bid Network, and we also sent it to uh, uh, three vendors of the equipment. Uh, we did uh, demo four different models of the street sweeper. Our now submitted the, the only bid. Uh, for the amount of $234,128, and that's for the Schwartz A9 Monsoon Regenerative Air Street Sweeper. If you turn in, into the packet, I've included two photos of our current street sweeper, and I included a, a brochure of the A9 Monsoon. And one thing that we did right in our spec um, that we wanted was a full-size rear door on the back side of the sweeper. 
And uh, the crosswind is our current sweeper. You see there's about a 10, 11 inch um, piece of metal that goes along the top. Um, and in the picture of the A9 monsoon, that's a full, a full height door. And where we save money here is every time that we dump the street sweeper. Uh, with our current street sweeper, especially when we are um, cleaning leaves, uh, the, the street sweeper goes out with the three leaf trucks. So when we dump the street sweeper now, we have to chip away at that block of leaves. Um, it takes about 20 minutes to, to chip away because there's a 10 inch, 11 inch uh, piece of metal that's holding it up. So it's a safety item mm -hmm. for one, and it's a it's a time a time piece for the other. So um, the A9 monsoon that we uh, received the bid on has a full size door, and when we demoed it, um, there's no hang up when we dump the block out. Um, so we are saving instantly 15 minutes per dump at roughly 80 dumps a year, um, and street sweepers can be good for 10 to 12 years. So. The, the regenerative air street sweepers for the most part are the same. Um, the A9 Monsoon is the only version out there that offers the full size rear door. And we wrote that into our spec, uh, like I said, for operator safety with cleaning out the, the sweeper and for time maintenance or efficiency of time. So um, we, uh, we have the budget item of 230,000. The bid came in at 234,128. So we have to account for $4,650 of additional um, expense. And uh, we have a balance remaining from the administrator's uh, vehicle purchase, our pickup truck purchase, and uh, 250 bucks from the garage improvements. Um, these are expenses that we've already committed to where we do have a balance. So on the fiscal note, I have that outlined uh, towards the bottom. Um, so there, there is no capital budget amendment needed because these are, are funds from within, within the capital budget. So okay. any questions? <coughs> well, I mean, it's, it's pretty much the same situation as we had with the ambulance because It'd be like if they, you know, if you put something in the bid that you know that no other manufacturer or no other model can provide, then you're only going to get a, that's the only bid you're going to get. Um, we're going to save, we're going to save that $4,000 annually. Right. I mean, so. But we don't know what the price would be from somebody else. They're going to be comparable prices because they're all they're all under the same technology right. uh, for the regenerative air street sweeper. You're probably going to be within probably five to seven thousand um, dollars. I I don't know that for sure, but uh, um, yeah. you know we're we're going to save money on the on the operations end of it by by not having to spend fifteen to twenty minutes every time we dump cleaning up the back. Yeah. And you sent this to three vendors who all carried this particular Well, we sent it to three vendors. Design, we, is that what you're saying? We sent it to Schwartz, Johnston, and Elgin. Uh, these are three different models. Um, the only difference uh, is the rear door. Uh, pretty much they're, they're all the same type of equipment or components. Um, it's just that the A9 Monsoon specifically has a rear door. The A7 uh, has has the uh, the shorter door, which you would have the same problem. Um, had we had we not wrote that in there, we we probably would have gotten gotten more bids. Well, I mean, I guess I still, at the end of the day, have the same the same issue that if you. Put in a bid spec that only one manufacturer is going to meet, or one model, then it kind of defeats the purpose of getting different bids that we because we don't know what it would be because we didn't ask. You know, well, we, we may have a pretty good idea what right. it's going to be, and I don't doubt that at all. But and and for for equipment, vehicles and equipment, you technically do not have to bid. The city has a policy right. of obtaining three proposals. Yeah, they're not actual so bids. We, right. we say that, you know, we call right. them that, but yeah. Right. 
Alright, so. Harry, do you want to chime in? I don't know if you understand the. I'm not sure what I walked into. I apologize. It's a little <laughs> messy out down the road. Yeah, Sorry. Just a little, I guess. Yeah, so the, with, the, with the ambulance single sourcing that purchase, we uh, basically passed a motion to forward it to council with no recommendation right. because of the single sourcing that we don't know what the other prices would be. I mean, I think they gave some pretty good reasons why this white bronze, the, the one they make, you know, would be better. Which to me is an argument for if it's if you get other prices and brown's a little more expensive, that would justify spending a little extra money. But I just have a hard time spending that much or this much because they're about the, you know in the same ballpark of cost without getting more than one bid. And in this case, because it was the bid or the specs were in written in such a way as I understand it, but if there's only one model that which satisfy that requirement, we only got one price or one offer, you know, one quote. Um, so have been part of um, both of those <coughs> conversations in different yeah, ways. Right. Um, I know from the public safety standpoint, when we've talked regarding vehicles that require in a, in a crisis situation, the idea of when you reach for something, you're reaching for something, you know exactly where it is, and um, having consistency between vehicles and equipment, um, and being able to, to have that and expect that, um, I know was a, a big part of the discussion at the committee level. I think when it comes to the single pieces of equipment that maybe aren't used in the same type of critical situations, that there might be uh, less of the emphasis on that of the reasoning and there might be more around a specific item within the the materials or the equipment that might have it written in such a way from a committee level or department head level that really narrows down the field of who can actually meet that bid. Um, I know for the brief time that I was on public works there were some discussions regarding how do we make sure that when we're looking at pieces of equipment that we're describing them in a wide enough way that meets the needs. But if there is right. something specific, there is. So if it's an attachment, I know we've talked about that before, of attachments that can be used on multiple pieces of equipment, it right there it narrows it down of what can you pick up? You know, who's really gonna be able to meet that? Um, yeah, I think that you're right. I think it sort of gets down to what is sort of what are the core requirements but you know I think you could you'd have a street sweeper that would work would function it just from the way Dan described it wouldn't function as well particularly when when it's being emptied it would take longer and not be as safe because this has a full door instead of the other one just there's a gap you know area at the top where it's they have to clean it up yeah <coughs> so anyway I guess for consistency, I'll, I'll move that we forward this to the council with no recommendation. I'll second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item uh, consideration of resolution 18 2 2241, approving a proposal from Barnes Incorporated for breast collection services. Is there a motion? Move approval. A second. Dan? Thank you, Mayor. Um, in your packet, we have, um, I, I should say that uh, the Public Works Committee will be reviewing this, um, all, all of my documents tonight at this Wednesday's meeting and my second reading will be on February 19th. Um, we received uh, um, a proposal from Barnes Landscaping to perform our brush collection uh, for 2018, 2019, and 2020. Uh, Johnson Tree Care informed us that uh, they no longer want to provide that service to the city. Uh, we've discussed this topic a few times at uh, the at the Public Works Committee, um, and uh, there, there's some other things that I'll get into in some of the other documents later tonight uh, regarding this program. Um, we reached out to Advanced Disposal uh, for for their interest, as well as Barnes. 
they're the, the two companies that uh, um, we have some indication from in the area that do this service. There are not, I, I, I should say almost no companies that, that perform this work for, uh, for municipalities. Um, in 2010, when the city went out, uh, there was only two, two companies, Veolia, uh, which is now Advanced Disposal, and, and Johnson Tree Care. So there's, there's not many players out there for, for this type of work. Um, so we have the Barnes proposal. Uh, the brush chipping component uh, for 2018 is $55,000. Um, there's some extra cost if they have to do uh, storm storm chipping and then uh, we have our Christmas tree chipping every year the Christmas tree chipping is already done for <coughs> this year um, in the 2018 operating budget we have forty seven thousand three hundred eighty dollars allocated for curbside brush chipping um, there's a small amount in there that uh, is designated for storm chipping if it happens um, so there, there would be a slight increase. We would be seeking um, an amendment as well uh, that's later uh, on the agenda uh, to increase the funding. I'll be asking for a total of, uh, to increase the budget for this up to 65,000 for 2018 and half of that will be in the storm utility budget and uh, the other half will be in the forestry budget. Um, 55,000 would be for the brush chipping, an estimated 6,000 if we have storm damage. And uh, like I said, the 4,000 is already spent for this, uh, for 2018. I'm basing the $6,000 estimate for storm chipping off of two people, eight hours a day for four days. And we had something similar to that in 2016. Uh, we had two storm events in late, late June, early January where we had, um, about a week and a half worth of chipping that we had to had to account for so is did we pay extra to Johnson for the Christmas tree pickup or was that included in the 47,000 uh, that's included <coughs> any questions so how much was it last year the total uh, the total expense for 2017 is probably around 44,000 45,000 somewhere in there yeah Honestly, I was expecting this to come in around ninety thousand. I just because there's there's n no companies around that do this. Um, I thought the fifty thousand or fifty five thousand dollar price tag was pretty good. There are other options that uh, the mayor doesn't want to enter entertain, but uh, <laughs> no, it was I will. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <coughs> we we we've talked at at Public Works a few times, but. Uh, if we were unable to find a contractor, um, the other options we would have to look at um, include city staff doing it, um, which we don't have the staff for, or possibly getting rid of the dog park and making that a, a yard waste drop-off site and um, have, a, have a DNR certified yard waste site. But uh, Public Works Committee, um, and I believe the mayor, uh, was waiting to see what uh, we would get in for proposals first to see what uh, what direction we go to. If we went that route, then people would have to bring their brush right. there, correct? Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Dan, even if they brought brush there, uh, we would still then need to staff it to chip it there, and then maintaining the chip piles, similar to previously when I talked about, why don't we collect our own leaves and turn it into mulch? Well. We, McFarland operates a, a similar type site, and Barnes um, has the contract. They come in, they remove all the brush, they remove all the yard waste. The frequency, I don't know what that is, but they have a, a fairly large site. Um, so I would envision something similar if we constructed our own drop-off site. We would pay somebody to manage it. I have a feeling we might have a lot more brush than McFarland. I don't know. Yeah. We have a lot more trees. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and also, I would be concerned about whether people would act, you know, there would be a, I think it would be, well, clearly be a reduction in services, but then some people wouldn't dispose of their brush at all, or they'd leave it where they right. shouldn't leave it or dump it in parks. Right. 
or other places, I guess they, if it's free, eh, maybe they wouldn't dump it in parks, but handier. Um, I guess I meant not not now. I think I mean, it's too late, certainly for this year. But, but you know, maybe we do need to consider doing it with our own forces or some combination of ASA. <laughs> I mean, we just did the dog park, so. I, yeah. Um, that would not. And this is a three-year. Right. Right. Contract. Right? Are there any termination clauses in it? Um. Well, it, it, the the proposal has their typical contract language on the back. Um, we uh, we wouldn't be doing a an independent contractor agreement. I know. Our attorney at one time made a comment about um, the pros and cons of those independent contractor agreement. This is a simple service function. I mean, if we're not happy with it, we can give yeah. them a notice and move on. Um, okay. It would be basically approving the proposal and and uh, signing up uh, according to the terms in their proposal. But as far as our program itself, that. Uh, um, nothing would really change with our scheduling mm -hmm. they would still honor the same type of schedule that we have the public works committee is entertaining some other uh, ordinance language um, uh, information uh, stating the intent of the program uh, they're going to entertain limiting the pile size that a resident can put out um, i know that was one of the issues that our former contractor had was uh, the amount of brush and uh, so the, the Public Works Committee has talked at uh, great length about that, and we're going to be having another conversation this coming Wednesday on it, too. So, yeah. did, did you get to the point of looking at how much or what it would cost to do it in-house? We, we don't have a staff, for one. To well, no, no, you'd have to, um, right. You couldn't do it with current staff. I assume you'd right. have to hire. Uh, no, we did not analyze it. Okay. No. Yeah, was there a time that we did it in house? That was years yeah. ago. Long time ago. Um, I think we we got rid of it f because of liability uh, Workman's costs. comp claims. Workman, workman's comp. Um, I, I don't know if we were pressured by Sidnick, but I know there was some it's incentive. About, thir about thirteen years ago, when I first started, we had just started to. We still had it, so it's probably been eight years. No, I mean about ten years since we. Sounds Stopped right. it, yeah. yeah, and we all that was also um, reduced staff because of that. That was a staff reduction thing at the same time right. from the former mayor call. So we stopped doing the service internally, mm -hmm. and there was a staff reduction at mm -hmm. the same time. Yeah, and then went out for a service. Is that okay? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Any other questions? No. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Item 6F, consideration of resolution 18 2 2242, amending the 2018 operating budget to fund the 2018 curbside brush collection program. Is there a move motion? approval? Second. Dan? Okay, kind of touching on what we uh, just talked about in the previous item. This is um, uh, the financial component for that, then, is uh, like I said, we had $47,380 in the 2018 capital budget, looking to increase that uh, for a total of $65,000 for 2018. It's operating, not capital. Right, operating yeah. budget. Mm -hmm. And that is partly conditioned on if what kind of storm cleanup right. they do, correct? Right, yeah, there, there's, there's $6,000 in there that could be spent or not be spent. Yeah. So, any questions? Mm -hmm. nope. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item is acceptance of general fund accounts payable. Checks dated November sixth through thirtieth, twenty seventeen, and January twelfth through February first, twenty eighteen. Documentation of invoices paid is available in the city clerk's office. Right. So we had some uh, checks that we I think we we tabled them. I forgot. I 
forgot to tell Joan to put him back on. So, I mean, Leah, <laughs> Leah, I forgot to tell Leah to put him back on. That's okay. <laughs> For the November ones. See the bus? Did you see the bus go by? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that wasn't good. Um, so I don't know what you guys have for numbering because my page is probably a little bit different. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and page one it starts um, for me. Uh, it's like Ayers Associates are kind of working on the Hooska Park Master Plan, the pool, um, sidewalk uh, engineering, so it's part of the 2017 capital budgets. Um, page five um, is Monona Bank, uh, which is uh, the credit card statements um, page seven um, pumps tires uh, 20 about basically 2400 these are a lot of the public works equipments um, with their tires uh, being replaced um, underneath that is purple cowl which again is the uh, yard waste disposal and our contract is with them and then Raymond Cattell underneath that um, just kind of finished this was finishing up the parking lots uh, for the library city hall and well number two. Is that, I had a question about simplex Grinnell. Is that a sprinkler system underneath the, the fire alarm park park services? For well, this is for the library parking lot, it says. Hmm. Yeah, it'd be their sprinkler system. But that's outside? Yeah. Under the overhang? Is yeah. That the, okay. Is that for the whole year? I mean, it's almost two thousand yeah, dollars. It had to be installed and stuff like that, so it's part of the construction cost. Wasn't it already there? Uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to check with uh, Brian. Hmm. Uh, page twelve, Borland uh, wreck. Creation, which is this, this would have been time Bridge Road or Bridge Park Road was uh, um, being finished up. So the park, the park insulation, and the ping pong tables. Uh, page 13, mm -hmm. Compass Minerals, America, to getting ready for the winter at the time. Is the road stop purchased? Page 22, kind of same thing at the Bridge Road Park, the Ultimate Playground. Um, some more equipment. Um, this is actually paid from, looks like from donations and other stuff, so it actually was not part of the capital. Um, page 24, first student transit. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of uh, could, bills. Could I go back to one morpho track? I'm not sure. It's on my page 47 and well, page 19 for you. Mm -hmm. Morphoi Dent equipment for 1700. What is that? I'm trying to think right. I don't remember offhand what it is. I'm trying to think what the code is. It yeah. looks like identity. Yeah, I'll have to look and look into that. With that. I don't remember. Can you tell what, what budget it's in? No, I, it's either. Uh, so I'm trying to, I couldn't figure out from that. It's, I think it's, I don't know if, I don't know if it's public work, or not, it's not public works. I don't know if it's police or EMS. What's the first three number? 400. It's, cap, it's capital. That's a capital budget. I know, it's, I know, which was your department. Send it back. Morpho, <laughs> Morpho, Morpho <laughs> track? Ident. Morpho Ident. Equipment, it said. M-O-R-P-H-O-T-R-E-K. $1,700. Well, that makes sense because that's what it looks like it's probably building. Oh, okay. I was going to say. Google will tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would make more sense now you say it because it does matter. I think it does is the public building. Okay, just curious. Um, mm. Uh, page 24, first student. Um, they had some changeover and uh, uh, they lost their building rep, and so they, we had some issues with their getting their invoices, so that's all caught up. Um, so, on page one of uh, 
date is 116 2018 could, could I just ask one other question on page 22 Burbicker Associates PDQ store rebuild why are we paying for that 1285 that, that that's itself. yeah so this is what we they review these plans for this rebuild and oh, okay. we bill back uh, the vendor so we okay. have to, you know it's just us paying so we're just paying that but we yeah. can build that yeah. so the account number is accounts receivable so uh, we'll get reimbursed for that okay. if we haven't already thank you hmm. um, so page of one uh, it's page one I have one of, of 116 these are all the payments we made to uh, for taxes uh, Dane County uh, Madison Schools Monona Grove School this year we probably collected 40 some percent it's probably the highest we've collected um, for December maybe for the first half which first for the county purpose first half is December 31st and the second half for our purposes is January um, 31st so I, I assume it's because a lot of the new law changes people were trying to a lot of times people would pay half in December and half in uh, January and I think a lot of people are with the new law where you can't deduct so much and new tax law it appears a lot of people are paying the full amounts instead of doing it in installments so we did get a lot higher uh, rate of collection uh, for taxes this year than normal page two uh, and 118 for one dates 118 full compass uh, we did the media equipment um, upgrades as part of the 2018 budget page four um, speedway sand and gravel is kind of the last payment for the msd project relocation i got one for another one page eight uh, 124 um, invoice dates tom tuber i just found that this one hit this one i found today he's retiring so i just want to hit on that one uh, otherwise that's all I have anybody have any questions nope no all in favor accepting the bill say aye there's no motion so just thank you Vicki I'll move to accept the checks of both November 16th the 30th and January 12th to February 1 second okay all in favor of it Accepting the bill, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Move adjourned. Motion passes. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. We are adjourned. John, you're so picky.